Wow, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Here, 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 very low. Adrenaline, you know what I mean? Like the buzz of something crazy and new and different. We are the champions. Slow go, slow go. Y'all coming closer. Everybody and welcome to The Birders Show. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host Diego Calderon. But for the first time since we started doing The Birders Show, Not I can reach Medellin. across the divide and greet you in person. Cheers. Absolutely. Nice Not to bad. see you, Not mate. Bad, mate. First Not time bad. in going on for two years. Almost a couple of years and it's always been behind the screen. It's and we can great. drink our Panamanian rum. Speaking of which, where are we today? This is, this is the first time we get The Birders Show out of our houses and our studios. So. We are in Bocas del Toro in Panama, Tranquilo Bay Eco Lodge, an amazing place that, you know, we finally, I mean, we wanted to come here a long time ago. Yeah. And another thing that we're doing a little bit differently in this episode of the show, because we're in the field, which you're going to be seeing a lot more of the kind of behind the scenes action, right? They're going to be seeing Julian, our videographer. They're going to be seeing Camila, our producer, Greg, our director. It's going to be, it's going to be more the real thing, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And we are joined actually by you know, the local guide here in the Tranquilo Bay, Natalia de Castro. Mm -hmm. She's been, you know, for several years, more than 10 years living here in Panama. She's a local expert. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll be with, of course, Jim, the owner of Tranquilo Bay Lodge, where we, where we are right now, this beautiful spot. And we're about to head out and do some pretty exciting birding tomorrow. Should we have a chat about where we're going tomorrow? We're gonna go to all this area of Fortuna, that is like the lower slopes of the Talamanca Mountains facing the Caribbean in uh, Western Panama. And how high? How high are we planning to go up? To? I, I, think, I was told just over a thousand meters, right? Yeah, I think the higher the higher in the air is like like around sixteen hundred okay. in that you know, crossing, but we're probably going to reach a thousand, thousand one hundred. The, the Talamanca range is basically ranging, let's say, from uh, east of San Jose in Costa Rica mm -hmm. to this area of let's say west of David in Panama. So it's a, a relatively compact range, and you know one of the interesting things here is that you 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 have like. I mean, probably we, we are gonna see that later, but we'll have like a really crazy mixture for us of like, you know, Pacific and Caribbean birds that for us are really, really stereotypically, you know, in different areas of the country. Here they get more mixed. So you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna enjoy that. It's kind of exciting to be lost like that yeah, when you're birding yeah. in a new place for the first yeah. time. I'm looking forward to it. Well, should be good. Absolutely, mate. Cheers. It's birds wake up early. The little bastards. <laughs> it started early. It's easy to forget, given where we were birding today, that we are on an island in the Caribbean here, right? Isla Bastimento. And then, like, walking through mangrove, hearing and, and watching, like, wood rails and Ibiza, Green uh, Ibiza and stuff, yeah. like, with the most beautiful sunrise ever, you know, Stunning. like, cracking. Yeah. What's, what's, what's your take on that green ibis on a mangrove shore? Like, for me, green ibis yeah. is a more Amazonian thing, more sea sandian. Yeah, so yeah. Looking at the maps and the range maps, it's kind of thrown me off a little bit. I bird in Colombia mostly, I've not birded in this region before. I actually love the fact that, you know, like, we took our boat, we went, you know, like, probably 45 minutes, and we were watching Volcan Baru, like the highest, right in front. yeah mountain, you know, point of the mountain range. Yeah. An absolutely crystal clear morning, right? Yeah. Which, yeah. funnily enough, we were saying on the boat, because birders, we're kind of weird travelers and weird tourists, because most people here, Bocas del Toro, they've come here on holiday, 
They see a morning like that and they're thankful, right? Yeah. No cloud in the sky. Yeah. Stunning morning. Yeah. We're looking at each other with a slight hint of, Itchy. uh-oh, Itchy. it's going to be very hot and sunny up there where we're going, yeah. which means it not actually, always, but... It actually was, yeah. In yeah. general, you know, it was sunny, dry, relatively tough birding in general today. It was a slow morning, right? Yeah. It was a slow morning. That happens in birding sometimes, and we kind of have to live with it. If everything was always easy, it wouldn't be as fun, but it was a slow morning, a slow start to the morning, at least. Sheldon, it's not been a single bird we've seen. But we've talked about 20 of them and... Are we gonna see this? Are we gonna see that? No? It's that yellow. Oh. So it seems... It seems that today we will have to do our failed quest. If it's gonna be too sunny like this, you wanna be like first thing in the morning. Like, on site. Eventually, the slightly slow morning was broken up by the first big cracking bird of the day, right? One of our Talamanca. What, what, what was your first one? The first, well, my, the first big cracking star bird of the day was the spangled cheek tanager, yeah. right? The, the yeah. first of the Talamanca endemics that we talked about earlier yeah. gave us cracking views, right? And, and again, you know, like you saw on the map when I showed it to you this mm -hmm. morning, like that bird, you can get it here and we were at the right elevation, but actually Natalia was even saying like, oh, that's that's not the most common tanager yeah. in these mountains. Yeah, she was really excited by that yeah. sighting. And yeah. We did have a great sight. I mean, there was, how many would you say? About five, six Yeah, five or six with a yeah. juvenile that was begging, yeah. asking for food. Yeah, and they and stuck they were, around for a while. Yeah, yeah. They, it was a, a little bit too sunny, but now we are getting some clouds and, um, uh, things are gonna get better, hopefully, with the birds. Another great bird that yeah. we caught up with today was a Talamanca so, endemic parakeet. Sulfur wing parakeet, Pirura Hoffmani. Okay. So this, I, these parakeets were unbelievable. Like, unbelievable. Actually, you know, I, I love the fact that you, you, everyone loves parakeets, but yeah. we got Jim very excited and like super keen on getting on camera and like really, I mean, it's not like good an when everyday the owner bird. or the guide is as excited as you are, right? That's yeah. a good sign. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I love that. Th that kind of genus of parakeets, right? The Pirula parakeets. Like mm -hmm. they're, they're, there's plenty of them. They're quite widespread, right? But getting the kind of views that we had, oh yeah, where they're perched, lingering oh, yeah. in the trees, being that's kind oh, yeah. of rare. Not bad. Press is not easy at all. Beautiful. Yeah, it's like behind stuff, but yeah, look at that. We'd had that quiet morning. We'd had some cool birds, the spangled cheek tanager, the Talamanca hummingbird, and we decided we made the call to drop down, right? Yeah. We weren't getting much action. It was still hot up there, lots of sunshine. We're getting on for sort of one, two o'clock. So we decided to go from about 1,100 meters down to about 800 meters. And it was like, boom. Explosion. Starting off with some scarlet thigh dacnus, then the parakeets, and then it just what? went crazy. What happened to your brain when you saw scarlet thigh dacnus facing the Caribbean? I got really mixed up during that mixed flock because we're on the Caribbean, right? Although this Caribbean doesn't feel to me quite the same as the Colombian it's a, it's, Caribbean. It feels pretty chocoish. It feels more Pacific. Colombian Pacific choco vibe, yeah. right? But the birds were such a weird mix of species because those mixed flocks was like emerald tanager, scarlet thigh dacnus. Silver throated that plays a little Some here and black there. Black-cheeked woodpeckers flying around. At, and at the end of the day, we got the two big toucans, you know. Keel, Keel Bill, that is a Caribbean thing, only in Colombia. Literally in Caribbean. Caribbean toucan in Colombia. And the Spanish, chestnut yeah. mandible that is yellow throated now with, with the lump, on, kind of Pacific thing. Pure Pacific for me. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice, dude. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's got really streaky wings. No, this is cool. At least we've had the, adren the flock See? adrenaline, exactly. you know what I mean? Like the buzz exactly. of something crazy and new and different. Yeah. And those, to be fair, those parakeets were cool, man. Those parakeets were cool. So, you you know about all the sort of biogeography of this region stuff like that more than me. What? Why am I seeing Pacific birds for me? Pacific birds all mixed in with in Caribbean, Caribbean birds here. Yeah, in the Caribbean. Actually, actually, probably like you could you you could get a familiar explanation of this if you think on Urabá area in Colombia. Okay, so the Ura area that basically connects with connects Panama, Panama and you know all all South America. And with, an area with, I've not birded before. 
Oh, really? No, never, never put it in Urabá. There you are. That's why it's even less familiar for you. Because, okay. you know, Urabá is this narrow part of the continent and then attaches to, you know, the thicker part. And what happens is, like, you, you, you get all, a lot of these species that are here, you know, they're, they're all trans-Andean to start with. Like, mm -hmm. they are in the other side of the Andes. Yeah. You know, trans and cis is an arbitrary term. I mean, cis means in this side and trans in the other side. Uh -huh. So basically, the first explorers were Amazonian, you know, Cis Andean, and they called Cis Andean the Amazonian or Orinoquia side. Okay. Like Humboldt was in the Orinoco and in the Amazon a lot. Yeah, sure. And then, you know, the trans Andean things here, what happens is that, you know, you, you, you get all the Caribbean things in Colombia, like Kill Bill Toucan, for example, that is a more dry uh, species. Yeah. But they can, you know, come to Panama, that is very, very narrow, and basically play, like, you know, anywhere else, anywhere they want. So. In the Can Panama Canal, the Pacific side and the, and the, and the uh, Caribbean side, they're almost the same thing. You know, lowland, tropical, jungle. Yeah, you're saying there's about 50 kilometers, basically, it's, between yeah, the it's two, like, right? I mean, there is not much of a change of a, of a microhabitat there. Okay. So, basically, it's, it's crisscross, like a good term. Like, you know, they can jump in and out from, you know, Caribbean to, to, uh, to, to Pacific. And then what separates them in an area like this is the Talamanca Range. So, right. you know, eventually there, there could be populations together on the same side, either the Caribbean or the, or the, or the Pacific. So for you, it's like having a total mix of what yeah. you get in Colombia that is more stereotype, let's say. And also, I mean, in that mixed flock that we were seeing, this crazy big mixed flock full of loads of different species, one thing that stood out to me as a really beautiful bird that I've seen a few times before, but isn't common where we are in Colombia, is a stunning male cerulean warbler. Yeah, yeah, actually, to be honest, I've seen probably only two, three, three good male Syrian warblers in Colombia. Uh -huh. And today was like a pure, full mosh, beautiful, beautiful plumage bird. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Plus, I mean, we get, how many, how many red Iberians you got today? Oh, I gave up counting. 30, 40? I would say, yeah, 50 easily. Yeah, they were so like, many. Yeah, shitloads of them. And here yesterday, the around, around Tranquilo Bay, where we're yeah. staying, we saw so many in eastern yeah. kingbirds in huge waves. There's so much food in all the, all the bushes around yeah. here that, you know, there's, there's plenty of, you know, like, we also got some uh, black burning warblers today. Black burning warblers today. There was here, one Tennessee, like, quick. A Tennessee. We had prothonotary and uh, Summer northern tigers. water thrush here yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Northern water yeah. thrush. So what we're seeing here is the first waves of the migration. And probably, probably worth to notice is that Migration in Central America is also very different than in South America. Yeah. You get more concentrations here, here of raptors and you know, all, the, all the other migrants. Once they reach South America, they have a huge territory to spread. They're fanning out. Take different the routes. And so sometimes the migration is a little weak for us down there. And we don't get so many warblers. But you know, migration in Central America is... Well, that, that's why they call it the river of you know, raptors and migrants yeah. and stuff, like anywhere in Mexico and, and down here, isn't it? Yeah, it's really clear, but it's yeah. also a real cultural thing around birding. It's migration is such a big part, particularly yeah. in the Northern Hemisphere, yeah. where maybe they don't have the, quite the numbers that we have in the tropics. Yeah. That migration is a huge part of the annual calendar a couple of times a year, sort of May time and September time, when they're all moving down and up. And you see that a little bit more here, I feel. I feel like here, little, because oh, of the concentration that you mentioned, it's kind yeah. of a date on the birding calendar. We, we don't think on when this bird is arriving, when this bird is living so much down there in Colombia. Yeah. But in North America, here in Central America, people do time, you know, their, their, their seasonality and their birding with, oh, we have to be in this area to go and see such and such. Yeah. Or, you know, like the cardinals are going to be on my feeders next week, things uh -huh. like that. One of the things of coming to Central America is that you have the island effect mm -hmm. because the continent is so narrow that you've got a lot of the densities of animals, like mammals here, you're gonna see way more mammals than you'll see down there in Colombia. Absolutely. Here you will see like, you know, coatis and raccoons and, you know, high densities of everything. Spiny rats here as well. Yeah. We were talking mm. about uh, a lifer that you and I had in common. I have a lot of lifers here, you don't have quite so many. It's a lifer for Diego, it's probably a lifer for me. <laughs> there should be some exceptions to that. There are some exceptions, yeah. ruddy woodcreeper. Just down the hill. And these females are pretty Come right attractive here. to our females are very, very similar to the males. So after the big mix flock, uh, from about 800 meters, we moved down a little bit lower to about six, five, 600 meters, I think. And we spotted a bird that was very exciting for you and for me, but even more so for you because you're in shorter supply of new birds than because, I am here. Because I tried several times, you know, crimson colored tanager. Crimson colored tanager. And it's not, you know, it's not per se a Talamanca thing because it's all, also reaching the lowlands. You know, it's like a, like a Talamanca range endemic that goes lower. It was a cracking bird, really beautiful. Yeah, plus you got it with the cherry stanager also. Like, 
they, like two lifers together same for you. Same perch, same yeah. perch. And yeah. same brilliant color combination yeah. between the two of them of black and red, right? Mm. I love when you go, you know, like candy, candy shopping on birding. They go to a new country, a new continent. It's like, you know, like I, I loved a lot of the birds we saw today, but I, I just love to see your reactions to some of those. Like, oh, look at this, and you know, like yeah. that's that's what it's about. It's fun. It's, it's why I like taking people out birding when they come to Colombia and, and they're seeing birds that they've yeah. never seen for the first time. And right. you get excited, you know, sometimes as yeah. much as the person. You see them through their eyes, right? Yeah. You see a bird you've yeah. seen loads of times through someone else's eyes. Here, you know, watching Emerald Tanagers is a, is a gift for us because here it's like a more regular, relatively easy bird. Uh -huh. In Colombia, you really, really have to, you know, work it out and, and go to the perfect location for it. It's yeah. not easy. Speaking yeah. of birds that are well, that I think of as quite Pacific birds, and again, I could be slightly wrong here, we also connected with a really great pair of broad-billed motmots on the same area of the, of the big yeah. next flock. Yeah, it's probably, yeah, it's probably, it's probably the same situation, and that was, I don't know, it was a lifer for you, the Rosset Anshrike? The Rosset Anshrike was, yeah. And there you are, you know, it's a bird that you actually even get east of the Andes in the, in the Amazonian slope of Colombia and Ecuador. Down towards Orito, Like, you know, like Putumayo, Escobar, yeah, and so. Bigal in Ecuador, and then it jumps to the Pacific in uh -huh. Colombia. And then here, it just, you know, kind of plays, plays there. You got it like all over the lowlands, just getting to the Panama Canal. And after the Panama Canal, they just stick to this mountain of Talamanca. There we go. Celebrating a very good lot of birds. Mixed flock, few lifers, cracking views. Yeah, <laughs> gotta have a beer, celebrate. Long day, but worth it. Oh yeah. 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 Por favor. Doctor no, Jim. Si, sí, por favor. Gracias, señor. Salud. 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 A successful day of birding after a tricky start. It kind of blossomed into a into a really good day in the end. How many species? Do you I think was going to say today? Natalia. Natalia, you know, she's working on the list because yeah. I mean, she was happily doing it. She she said something about fifty-ish. I would have said about fifty. 50 yeah. plus, I think. If we include some of the ones we got on in the very early morning on the way up, like we got northern jacana and stuff. Oh, on, you're piling the list, man. You're piling like the list. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen a northern jacana, and it's oh, kind yeah. of a cool looking bird. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of got that little blue I got thing. Some turns cool. and you know, like pelicans yeah. and stuff. I mean, I counted those birds that you hate. You know, the wimbrel and the spotted sandpiper, all those you know, all those wading oh, birds yeah. that you can't be bothered with. Yeah, yeah, I know. I love them. <laughs> I love them. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, it was a great day. It was a it great was. day. I mean, and just the fact that you know, you're you're sleeping in this beautiful lodge in the middle of the mangrove and on an island, you know, like... Drinking this delicious rum as well. Beautiful Panamanian rum, right. rum in the middle of, of the Caribbean. And then you can go birding in this mountain, like even, even needing to wear a fleece. I mean, that's, that's just a great experience. That's very It doesn't cool. happen everywhere, you know. It doesn't. It no, really you doesn't. need, yeah, yeah. You need something unique, like a geographical anomaly, like Santa Marta, like the Talamancas, mm -hmm. like, you know, something, something cool. That's why we're here. That's why we're here, absolutely. And we're gonna be here for five more days. Yeah, not too exploring shabby. Exploring this whole area. Not too shabby. We've got some cool birds that we're looking out for, which yeah. we'll be talking about in the next episodes. Uh, so make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be made aware of those episodes when we release them. And you and I are going to finish this run, I think, and then I'm, I'm, gonna, hit, I'm gonna hit the I'm sack, finito, man. I'm finito, I'm ready I'm for bread. make like a sloth <laughs> and pass yeah. out. <laughs> Cheers, man. Hasta mañana. See you tomorrow. Cheers. Ciao, ciao.